On this, the final day of 2020, we welcome you to your Barbados Today Evening News Update. Barbadians will usher in 2021 from their homes as government orders their curfew at the stroke of midnight, while authorities probe an outbreak of coronavirus infections among locals with no travel histories. Prime Minister Mia Motley announced the measure at a news conference today, stressing that while there was no need for alarm, government must protect citizens and guests. With immediate effect, this country will have a curfew from midnight to 5 a.m. from today, 31st of December until the 14th of January. Every night from midnight to 5 a.m. We're doing that in order to be able to pause and cause everybody to pause with respect to the frolicking and the public gatherings and fetting. Um, there will be no commercial fets day or night during that next period up until the 14th of January. No commercial fets. However, Barbadians are allowed to dine at restaurants and attend church services tonight up until 11 p.m. Monday and Tuesday have been declared public holidays. And the reopening of schools has also been delayed by two weeks. Prime Minister Motley urged Barbadians to adhere to the measures. And whatever else you do, pause, not panic. Pause, not panic. And I'm asking the country to allow us, therefore, to go through this period so that we can st keep the ship stable as we go forward. We have a lot of guests with us. Um, we're asking you, enjoy our beaches, enjoy our restaurants, enjoy your company, but do not overdo because the government officials, in particular the monitoring officials and the police, will take necessary action where people are breaching protocols inappropriately, as they have already done, Minister Bostic, I believe, with respect to persons in the last few days having been made to account for their breaches of protocol. The measures will allow health authorities to get to the bottom of five local cases out of a total of 10 positive cases reported today. Two out of the five have been identified as prison officers at Her Majesty's Prison Dodds. Health and Wellness Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick says a massive testing exercise is underway at the island's lone jail. We will be launching a massive campaign at the prison intended to test every single person who works at the prison in Barbados over the next 48 hours. And that is inclusive of prisoners, prison wardens, and also civilian staff. And this is going to be going on for the next 48 hours, as I said, and we will continue also to throw as many of our resources as we need to in terms of the other three cases. So all five cases will be under active investigation, and we intend to bring this matter to some sort of clarity once we have all of the facts available. Meanwhile, Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George assured that the worrying five cases are being thoroughly investigated and the Ministry is well able to handle the situation. The five of particular concern are as follows. A 37-year-old male of a Christchurch address, a 28-year-old male of a St. James address, a 43-year-old female of a St. Thomas address, an 18-year-old male of a Christchurch address, and a 43-year-old male of a St. James address. Three of the five had minor symptoms that suggested that they were infected with COVID, but as we indicated, none of them had a travel history. I would just like the public to know that we will start, the, the contact tracing has started immediately and we have put measures in place to make sure that every individual will be tested associated with each case. We have done this before at the National Assistance Board. We have done this before at the Ellerslie School and the outbreak in a church. We do have the resources to make this happen and I ask the public to bear with us during this period of time cooperate with public health officials to make this process seamless. 
Head of the Cabinet COVID-19 Subcommittee, Foreign Affairs Minister Senator Dr. Jerome Walcott, assured Barbadians there is no need to panic, but he urged citizens and visitors to adhere to the protocols. Take this period as a period of rest and reflection. Don't go outside partying if you don't have to. I want to remind you that even though there might be a, a, a curfew on from midnight, that indeed the uh, combined policing team of the Barbados Police Force and the Defense Force will be up and they have the necessary technical capacity which is being deployed to ensure that during this period that people maintain the restraint that we need them to do at this point in time. Our news team was out and about today and we spoke to several Barbadians about their plans for All Year's Night and many told us they were planning to have a quiet evening even before government announced the curfew. I really don't have any plans for All Year. I'm going to spend the night at home because of the COVID situation. And any New Year's wishes for 2021? I would like to get some more money to do, you know, my stuff with. <laughs> Well, for All Year's Night, I'll be going to church, I'll be going to sundown worship, and then I'll be going to watching the fireworks. I'm going to hotel and I'll watch the fireworks. All Year's Night, I was anticipating church, but because of the COVID, I think it's best that I follow church online. So I'm going to follow church online. Uh, I'm going to spend a little time in prayer, making sure that you know I can thank God for bringing me through 2020, because it wasn't easy. So my intention is to do that, and then I will spend a few hours with some friends, um, close friends, not, nothing that would exceed the COVID-19 um, expectations, and just relax and try to, you know, see how we could, what we can plan for 2021 okay. to be able to get through this COVID-19 situation. I think from where I sit and where I sat and was able to see how people have struggled, uh, it's been hard. I wish and I hope that God will bring us through this and that, you know, for the future, the country can get back up and working and that Barbadians will give some thanks for being able to see the whole of 2020. My old year, year's night plans are just going to church tonight and tomorrow I'll be celebrating my 60th birthday. I'll be just relaxing and cooling out within my family setting, having a good time. In this time, it is very difficult. Uh, it'll be taking a chance because you really don't know. So. My safest thing is to be at home, you know, with my family. Uh, I guess, but I will, at the same time, I'll be wishing that, uh, hoping that everybody else do the same thing. And um, truthfully, I would like everybody to have a good time. I mean, this is a difficult time, you know, as everybody know worldwide. This is, this is not, not hoax. This is the real deal. So I believe that everybody should be taken on the safe side. Well, yeah. I will wish, my wish is that we will get this, this pandemic, uh, epidemic, under control. Hopefully, I will hope by maybe mid-year that this will be settled down and the vaccine w will work. I hope that that will work because this is not an easy thing. All right. Globally. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional news as the year ends, some Guyanese workers got a special gift from the government. President Irfan Ali announced a one-off cash grant to all public servants and sugar workers. I am pleased to announce a one-off grant of $25,000 to workers of the entire public sector, which includes central government, statutory bodies, subvention agencies, public corporations, government pensioners, and staff of the University of Guyana. To assist these workers to cope with the challenges associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. The total cost of this assist assistance is in excess of $2 billion. 
and will directly benefit over 60,000 workers and their families. This initiative will also extend to current workers of Gaisuku, those sugar workers who are unconsciously deprived of their livelihood by the APNU AFC government will in the new year be provided with transitional support as we continue to restructure the industry in keeping with the PPPC's promise. On the international front, this New Year's Eve is being celebrated like no other with coronavirus pandemic restrictions limiting crowds and many people bidding farewell to a year they prefer to forget. Australia was among the first nations to ring in 2021 because of its proximity to the international dateline. It was a grim end to the year for New South Wales and Victoria, the country's two most popular states which are battling new COVID-19 outbreaks. In past years, one million people crowded Sydney's harbour to watch fireworks at centre on the Sydney Harbour Bridge, but most watched on television this year as authorities urged residents to stay at home. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. On behalf of management and staff, Barbados Today wishes all a prosperous, safe, and healthy 2021.